All right, good morning. So this was a title I submitted, but a more appropriate title for my talk, I think, would be an experimental test of homoploid hybrid speciation in Drosophila. So homoploid hybrid speciation occurs when hybridization between two species gives rise to new, a new lineage that is both fertile and, and true breeding, but that is reproductively isolated from both parental species. And this is different than polyploid hybrid speciation because ploid is maintained it is the same between uh, the parental species and the hybrid, the hybrid species. And if we think about this schematically, we can imagine two species or lineages shown here in, in blue and red. And at some time point, they hybridize, producing a new population where individuals have a mixture of ancestry in their genome. And the important component of hybrid speciation is that this hybridization event, or the mixing of these two genomes, results in reproductive isolation between the hybrid species and the parental species. And this is kind of the hardest part of identifying hybrid speciation, is describing the hybridization event to the generation of reproductive isolation. And so there's been a few models that have looked at this and kind of go through it and look at when we expect to see hybridization. Uh, the first one I'll talk about was published by Alex Berkeley and colleagues in 2000. And under their simulations, they modeled a scenario where, oh, sorry, give away the second one. They modeled a scenario where hybrids um, are fit in a novel environment, so you have transgressive segregation for traits and multiple fitness, and so hybrids do very well in an intermediate or novel environment compared to the two parental species. The two parental species do really poorly in this environment, so hybrids are able to invade this environment. And then uh, polymorphism, I'm sorry, inversion polymorphisms that differ between the two parental species become balanced in hybrid species, making them completely interfertile, but having some intrinsic, having some intrinsic uh, incompatibilities with their parental species. A more recent model, model um, published by a previous presenter, Molly Schumer and colleagues in 2015, um, pro provided a scenario that can occur independent of ecology, it doesn't have to, but it can be independent of ecology, where you have uh, two parental species, their genomes shown here in blue, in blue and yellow, that hybridize and produce uh, hybrid populations. And within the genomes of the parents, they have multiple epistatic pairs with loci. Those pairs become balanced in the hybrid population so that the, this pair of loci here, the yellow loci, now in the hybrids made with this parental species, they'll be, have some compatibilities. And the same is true at this second locus when they back cross or mate with the first species. So you get reproductive isolation evolving independently of ecology due to genetic interactions. And so our goal is to test some of the predictions of these uh, models using experimental evolution. Specifically, we want to look at do we find evidence that hybrids have higher fitness in a novel environment than their parental species do? Um, can they adapt more rapidly to that environment than parental species? And then secondly, can we see any reproductive isolation or incompatibilities arising between the hybrid populations and their parental populations? And so the basic approach we take, generate hybrid populations, so we kind of force admixture, generate hybrid populations, allow them to evolve alongside their parental species, measure fitness through time, and then also measure um, measures of reproductive isolation. We focused on female mate choice and male sterility when you cross females from the hybrid population back to uh, the parental species. And so the species we focused on uh, were Drosophila santomea and Drosophila yacuba. Uh, these are sister species. Drosophila santomea is endemic to the island of Sao Tome, and Drosophila yacuba is more widespread in sub-Saharan African Africa. They diverged approximately a million years ago. They have strong behavioral isolation, so females of both species strongly prefer males of their own species over males of the other species. And they produce fully sterile F1 hybrid males in both directions of the cross. And so, uh, just quickly to show you how we created these hybrid populations, uh, because F1s are sterile, we t I took F1s and then back crossed them to both uh, parentals and then allowed these back cross groups to interbreed for roughly three generations to get some admixture and then use those to start the experiment as my hybrids. Um, we also confirmed that they were indeed hybrids um, using some low coverage genomic sequencing. And so in total, we created 48 populations. 16 of the populations were hybrids and then 16 populations of each of the parental species. Those populations were maintained and evolved in two environments. So it's just using instant Drosophila media, and you can mix it with water, or you, I mixed it with water with some sodium chloride. And the reason I use sodium chloride is it's benign to work with. It's easy for me to touch. I don't have to worry about it. And it's easy to manipulate the concentration to affect the fitness. So these bottles here, if you look at this, this is one population 
in just the water environment and one population in the water plus salt. And if you can tell, there's more dots, flies, and pupae in this bottle than in this bottle. And so again, we measured through time fitness, uh, female mate choice, and hybrid sterility in these populations. So at the onset of the experiment, what you're looking at here is uh, fitness on the y-axis and then fitness in the control environment or the salt environment for the three different genotypes, the Santame, Yakuba, or the hybrids. And at the onset of the experiment, um, Fitness was lower for both parental species in the salt environment. Um, the hybrids had kind of poor fitness overall in both the control and the salt environment, and their fitness was as low as the lowest fitness seen in the parental species. So look at, we look at this changing through time. Um, this is fitness in the salt environment through time for both the treatment population, so the ones that were raised in salt or maintained in salt, and the control populations, controls shown in the data's dash lines and over 15 generations, or 16 generations of evolution. And we don't see any strong adaptation in either the parental species, in either of the parental species. We all, so there's no strong differentiation between the dotted and solid lines at the end of the experiment. And the same is true for the hybrids. An interesting result though, is that in the hybrids, so again, no evidence for an adaptive advantage in the hybrid populations. But what we see is that the hybrid's fitness is steadily increasing across the, across the experiment. And what it looks like is happening is their fitness is just kind of converging on the most fit parents. So they're becoming, in terms of their fitness at least, more Drosophila Yakuba-like, so they match up here. We next measured um, female mate choice. And so how we do these trials is we put a female from a population in a vial, and we give her a male, and give her the opportunity to mate with that male, watch her for one hour, and score the time that she mates at. And so females were given males of any of three genotypes, either a hybrid male from her same population, uh, or and one of either of one of the parental species. And so how I'll be showing these results, each panel that I show represents a population of hybrid females, and then the points represent different male genotypes that are given and the proportion of times that they mate with that male genotype. So hybrid males are going to be shown as green, Drosophila santomea is blue, and Drosophila yacupa is red. And a note, given the sample size we have for each female-male combination, um, this experiment is designed to detect any kind of larger differences. We don't have the power to detect small, say, 10% difference in, in mate preference. And so I'll, there's a lot, but I'll walk you through it. These are all the 16 hybrid populations, and the um, proportion of times they mate with uh, all the different three genotypes of males. And if we focus in on these 10 populations specifically, what we find is as we're seeing with fitness, the females prefer to mate with either hybrid males or Drosophila yacuba males. They discriminate against Drosophila santomea males. And so in these populations, there's no difference in preference for females whether the, we present her with a hybrid male from her same population or the Drosophila yacuba parental. In these five other five populations, we found we didn't have the power to detect any difference, so females didn't have a strong preference for males of their own population or either of the parental populations. So at 31%, we could detect a difference. However, if maybe we got lots more numbers, there are, you, you, if you look closely, there are some subtle differences. Perhaps there's something going on here where there's a weak preference for males from your own population, but again, we didn't have the, the power to, to say this is, this is true. So this is just summarizing that. Again, it's kind of consistent with the fitness results we see. Populations, the majority of populations appear to be kind of progressing towards their one parental, the more fit parental species, Drosophila and Cuba. So the last thing we looked at was hybrid sterility in these populations. And so when you cross the pure parental, Santa Maria and Cuba, F1 male hybrids are completely sterile. So what we did is we took the hybrid females and we crossed them to either, as with the mate choice, either the hybrid from their same population or one of the parentals. And then we scored F1 males of these crosses and determine whether the males were fertile or sterile. We did this for four of the 16 populations so far. We looked at at least five pairs um, per female male genotype combination. And then of those individual crosses, we scored at least 16 males per cross with a minimum of five and a maximum of 23. And so for the first three populations shown in these three panels, um, there was no difference in the level of fertility within hybrid males when a female was mated to either uh, the hybrid male or the Drosophila yacuba male. So those are the first two boxes in each panel. Uh, but they were almost, also almost completely infertile when mated to Drosophila sentimea. In one population, however, we found the same thing with 
in terms of when mating to Drosophila sanctimaea, the males tended to be infertile. Um, when mated to males from their same population, they tended to be completely fertile. And there was kind of intermediate levels of fertility. So there was a significant difference in the level of fertility when crossed um, to Yakuba and Santamea and the hybrids. And so going back to the beginning, this could be one potential mechanism explaining this is that in these hybrid populations, they're kind of becoming, their genomes are fixing or becoming fixed at different incompatibility loci such that they have reproductive isolation from both parentals. Um, interestingly, as fitness is going towards that one Drosophila Yacouba parent, they also have higher fertility with that parent. So it's kind of not a 50-50, they don't have even reproductive isolation from both parents, but rather they're slightly more uh, reproductively isolated from the worst parent in terms of fitness. And so the next step to this project will be to, we're hoping to look into kind of genetically what's going on in these populations, how much of the genome is regressing back to that Drosophila Yacouba parent, and whether we can use the segregation of infertility in these populations to look at whether we can localize regions that are responsible for sterility with either of the parental species. And with that, I'd like to thank uh, Dan Kutute and members of the Tute lab. And yeah, if you Google hybrid speciation or hybrids, you come up with some kind of some kind of cool, cool pictures. So thank you. the parental losing of 50-50, at the end we don't know, we haven't done any of the genetic work yet. Yeah, that's the next step. Yeah. 